almost every player will recognize one specific offering as one of the most iconic ones in the entire game. I am talking about the Memento Moris. Offerings that allow us to mori the survivors by hand without having to sacrifice them in a hook. Now that they made Memento Moris more cinematic, I have decided to rank all of them in this video. The Trapper has the most basic mori in the entire game, but there is also a reason as to why. Because this mori has been unchanged since the release of DVD, where the animations weren't as flashy or as fantastic as they are now, and instead they were more based on reality. Also, the developers wanted to play it safe to not alter the violence ratings in different countries like China, which is why it's so mild. The solution is obvious, trappers should use a bear trap in some way on this mori, and let's hope that this animation is improved in the future. I've always had problems with the pig's mori. I think the survivors putting their hands in front of their faces is cool, and I also like how they slice is also referencing the original movie. My problem is the awkward staring moment after the hand stab that looks very bad in my opinion. But the possible reason why it's there is because this Mori is already the fastest Mori in DVD, so the devs probably wanted to pad out the time to balance it out with the others. My biggest issue with this Mori is that the bear trap activation is way more brutal than the Mori itself, so the Mori is technically a downgrade of an actual game mechanic. So out of all the original Moris, I think Hillbilly is the most brutal one for sure. The thing is that this one is obviously mild and limited due to it being an original, and to be completely fair, this is just the exact same as Hillbilly just using his power, which is why I think it looks so bad. What makes the Mori different from Hillbilly using his power normally in a chainsaw sprint? I think if he lifted the survivors with the chainsaw, not only would it look better, but it also would make this Mori more unique. I really dislike the school merchant's Mori, I just cannot rank it any lower than this because it has more effort put than the other three that we talked about. This Mori was so bad, that behavior decided to slightly alter the camera angles on live release, which is why I don't think it's the worst one anymore, but it still makes zero sense. Why do the survivors immediately stand up after being downed? Why is there a drone scanning the survivors? And why are the survivors surprised that the school merchant is behind them? Why don't they look back? I think if the survivors struggled against her like they do with Pig, this would look considerably better. It's also just one stab in the back and that's it. I do have to say that this Mori fits the lore we got, as it definitely looks like a scene from a manga but it just looks ridiculous when it's applied to DVD, because it lacks the context a manga scene would have. Now, if we talk objectively, Raid's Mori is unimpressive and it's basically the same as the Trapper. The thing that makes it unique can only be seen from a survivor's point of view, and that's the camera angles that they decided to give which completely hide the survivor, making it look very cinematic. I also love the leg pull that Wraith does to the survivors, which makes this Mori look fantastic near the exit gates. Out of the original three, this is, in my opinion, by far the coolest one, but it's still obviously very lackluster when compared to the rest. Now before we talk about Freddy Krueger's Mori, I have to say one thing. This Mori is a straight up reference to a scene in the remake film, so as a homage, it's really cool. Now on DVD, however, I just really dislike how the survivors stand up and look oblivious in the middle of the match. There is this one cool thing about this Mori, and that's the fact that from the survivor's point of view, Freddy appears intermittently just like his original power before the rework, but besides that it's just weird and very underwhelming, especially for a character that can literally do anything they want and toy with the survivors. The concept of this Mori is nice and it also incorporates the blight juice into the survivors by using the putrid serum syringes. However, for some reason, ever since the release of this character, I felt like the Mori is kinda underwhelming and lacks impact. The bubbles that grow out of the survivors look bad in my opinion and there is also a slight pause while the survivor is contorting that I think removes some of the impact of the final hit. I think a Mori 
that replicates the eye scene from Dead Space would have been cooler and also make it so that the survivors end up dying because of the serum and not because the blight hit them. It would be cool to see them violently contort from the blight's point of view just like it happens with a future Mori we will talk about later. Okay, let me be completely honest. I really like how Pyramid Head grabs the survivors from the floor instead of them standing up and also how he gets the silent heal support by summoning weird metals that end up completely breaking the survivor and the final stab is the cherry on top. My problem is from that extremely weird sword turn that happens at the end which feels so wrong. It looks very weird and physically doesn't even make any sense and it makes the sword feel less heavy. Obviously it's due to the fact that DBD is very limited and they cannot destroy the survivor's body so their torso ends up intact after this but it just removes all the strength and power from the Mori by making the sword feel like it doesn't weigh anything. If the turn was removed, this Mori would definitely be higher in my opinion. I know a lot of you will disagree with this placement and honestly the Mori looks pretty cool with the stab in the back, the constant attacks after the stab and also the fury scream at the end. It showcases how angry the spirit is and it fits her character perfectly. Why do I rank it this low? That's because of the start of the Mori, where the survivors just magically stand up immediately and it looks so bad from a third person point of view that it just makes the entire Mori ridiculous. I hate when the Moris make the survivors stand up, but at the very least they had the decency to animate the survivors standing up. In this one, they just straight up skipped that part. Just like with Freddy Krueger, this Mori is a direct reference to the Resident Evil game as this is a straight up replica of how the nemesis can eliminate Jill Valentine. It's a simple and clean Mori and that's my issue with it. Considering the numerous scenes that Resident Evil has, this Mori just looks too basic for someone like the nemesis. I think replicating Brad's scene from the original Resident Evil 3 would not only be iconic but also more brutal than it is now. But to be completely fair, I think it's Capcom who limited the artistic choices of behavior because I doubt that nobody tried to pitch this idea while the DLC was developed. There is something unique though and that's the fact that if you perform this Mori on a STARS member, Nemesis actually screams STARS, which is a cool easter egg. Later face Mori could have been so much better if it weren't for the limitations on ratings that DVD wants to have, starting the Mori with a smack with the hammer in order to stun the survivors and then just straight up halving them and later give a battle cry makes it so cool and unique and way better than Hillbilly. But of course the consequences look meaningless because the body of the survivors is still intact which, understandably, it's the game's limitation, holding the potential of this Mori by a lot. The Doctor has a very cool Mori in my opinion if we go by the pure description of it as it's one of the only Moris that actually feels supernatural because they involve the power of the character without any physical violence as instead of hitting the survivors or stabbing them, instead the doctor electrocutes their brain and later inspects their faces. And that's where the issue is. Being so close to the face of the survivors reminds you that DBD is not a AAA quality game because there are no after effects besides the smoke. Now, a very cool positive about this Mori is how the doctor's voice changes and it makes him sound completely insane. I like that touch a lot. The Plague's Mori was revolutionary back in the days because it was the first time ever where we heard a character speak and the fact that she just chants a prayer before the Mori gives her so much personality and makes this Mori so much nicer. Instead of having the survivor stand while she prays, they are on the floor and she ends up lifting them with the chains of her sensor which I appreciate from behavior because they could have just made the survivors stand up by themselves. Now the vomit part in my opinion is kinda weak. I don't think a survivor would immediately die after this and apparently she drones them with her liquids which sounds disgusting. So that's a big downside. This can be fixed easily however because you can have corrupt purge 
and it actually changes the color of the puke and that looks way better in my opinion. The Huntress Mori is clean, brutal and simple and it's also one of the original Moris in the game. However, while I like the current Mori and I think it also fits the Huntress, I think it would have been cooler if they somehow incorporated the ranged attack as part of it, like for example hitting them in the head as they try to stand up and escape her. Either way, despite the Mori's age, I still think it's pretty solid and I don't have many complaints about it. I also really like her voice in the Mori, which adds a lot of impact to it, and the slight twitching of the survivor's hand at the start is a nice little touch. Now before I explain this position, I have to say that the twins are the first characters in the game that actually have two Moris, one of them when Victor is inside Charlotte which is the one I decided to rank, and another one without Victor which looks like this. Understandably, without Victor the Mori is very simple and reminds me a lot of the original ones, so it would be ranked low on this list. But the one with Victor is very fun and it features a fantastic touch, where Victor asks permission from Charlotte in order to pounce on the survivor's back. That detail gives so much character to the Mori and it also showcases the deep bond the two have, which makes it fantastic from a lore standpoint. It's not flashy when talking about the Mori itself and the animations, so while it deserves praise, I think it's rated pretty fair. I believe that Michael has the cleanest, simplest Mori in DBD, but it's perfect for Myers. He picks up the survivors from the ground by grabbing their neck and just straight up rams the weapon inside twice, while the survivors are struggling only to give up, and then he just throws them like trash. That disrespect at the end makes this Mori so good and it even feels personal, especially in first person as you can see the faces of the survivors very close to you. Now the Mori is old and it suffers from animation problems, just like the twins, while lore wise it's perfect for Michael Myers, overall it's nothing magical or wild, so it would be unfair to rate it higher than some of the crazier ones in this video. Just like the majority of characters lower in this list, the clown's Mori is simple and clean, and it's also the second Mori that caught change from the PTB, as they later added the crack sound in order to make the stomps more impactful. It's the part after the stomps which gets crazy, as the clown straight up takes a finger out of the survivors, licks it, which by the way makes a very disgusting sound, and saves it in his pocket. This was one of the most unexpected Moris I had seen back in the days and it still holds up nowadays due to how unique and weird it is. Clown, you are one messed up weirdo. I know on the DVD community, the Demogorgon's Mori was very disappointing back in the days because everyone expected the heads to be gone, but obviously due to the limitations of DVD, this was not possible. However, I still think it's actually a very crazy and animalistic Mori which fits the Demogorgon as it's not a human being that wants to torture and inflict pain, instead it's a creature that wants to immobilize the survivors by snapping their neck so that they can eat it later. Also the scream after the attack and the splatters that appear on the survivor are very nice touches and I wish more Memento Moris had those splatters as they improve on the Moris overall. This Mori is also technically made for DVD, as I don't remember a scene like this in Stranger Things. In terms of uniqueness, the nurse takes the number one spot, it feels so personal and up close, and the struggle of the survivors only to end up lifeless at the end, with the nurse closing their eyes, makes this Mori so creepy compared to the rest, and that's what makes it so special, it's creepy, and it fits the nurse so well. I also love how this Mori made a theory in the community that the nurse was the most merciful character, only for this to be later deconfirmed by the devs with the archives, and that's how good the Mori was. Also, consider that the nurse was the fourth killer added to the game, so her Mori is actually pretty impressive when you think that it was made back in 2016. 
And just like with the nurse, this Mori is also very creepy and supernatural. Where do the hands come from? Is there a toolbox inside the void where they keep the weapons? Why are there so many weird limbs? And where do the survivors go after the Mori ends? This is one of the two Moris where survivors are still alive after it ends, which gives it another supernatural feeling. It gives more questions than it gives answers. And also, fun random fact, Dredge and Michael Myers share one thing in common. Can you guess what it is? They are the only two characters that can use a kitchen knife and a screwdriver as a weapon. The more you know. This Mori is perfect for the trickster, as it feels like he is performing for us, showcasing how flexible he is thanks to his dancing skills, and also showcasing the skill he has with the throwing knives. And the first knife thrown is also the last knife hit, which pins his autograph to the body of the survivor, also showcasing his narcissistic personality. There are so many things that make this Mori perfect, but still I wanted to ask, am I the only one who thinks this Mori is too much? The way Trickster moves feels like an anime instead of the grounded movement that is done with the other Moris. It feels more like a Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat thing than DVD. It also features the survivors standing up for no reason, but the Mori wouldn't work otherwise. I don't know who thought of the idea of Slinger lifting the survivors with his rifle and shooting a harpoon straight that comes out of the mouth. It's so funny and honestly, they deserve a raise. It's one of the most disrespectful Moris as well due to how ridiculous and brutal it is. And I love the smile that Slinger does. It feels like he is having so much fun back then. If you turn up your volume too, you can also hear the sound of the survivors gagging on the harpoon, which honestly kinda reminds you of the reality that a survivor just straight up got metal rotted. Out of all the Moris available, this is by far the most realistic Mori in the entire game, which actually makes it very grim when you think about it. The survivors try to defend themselves just like in real life, and Legion struggles to actually end the survivors, which makes this Mori feel realistic. In some ways, this could have been one of the better Moris in the game and for a character like the Legion, this is actually pretty crazy. I think it's definitely the fact that unlike most Moris in the game, where it's clearly one-sided, this is the only Mori where both the Legion and the survivors show the same strength. Only the Legion have a knife. I called the Trickster's Mori a Mortal Kombat fatality, but the artist wins the cake because this is probably the flashiest Mori in DVD and the closest one to an actual fatality, which makes it so special and unique. Just like the Doctor, Dredge or Pyramid Head, she uses her power to make it supernatural by having an entire ink crow explode from inside and later burst again into smaller crows that end up eating the survivors. I wish the ink crow stayed after the Mori ended in order to give it an amazing detail in the matches like a warning sign for any other survivor seeing the aftermath like it's your turn now. But besides that small detail, I think I don't have any more issues with this amazing animation. So by now you probably know how DVD has been constantly limiting themselves in order to not increase the age ratings in different countries like China, Japan or Germany. And for that reason, the older Moris are less flashy and more simple in concept. And then the devs made Hag, the sixth killer added to the game. And let me tell you, this is by far, and was by far, the most groundbreaking and shocking Mori, and to this day, no other Mori besides maybe the clown has shocked me so much as the Hag straight up going animalistic on the survivor. It was also the first ever Mori to be in third person for both the survivors and the killers due to how confusing the animation would have been in first person. What I also love about this Mori is how it feeds the hack so much and showcases how hungry and desperate she is, to the point that she is not a human anymore, she is more of a monster that wants to feed herself. The idea of a killer getting punched in their own Mori is very funny and kinda pathetic. I don't believe Dwight or Claudette are able to just straight up punch Wesker in the face 
but this movie still fits perfectly with any of the Resident Evil survivors and it's the response of Albert Wesker that makes it so brutal. Having the Ouroboros tentacles completely destroy the survivors from the inside and almost popping their eyes is fantastic and it's also a reference to one scene in Resident Evil 5, although slightly edited. Wesker putting his sunglasses back is also an amazing touch, like he doesn't care what just happened and he just moves on to the next survivor. This Mori also has an easter egg when you do it with Chris, making it also special and fitting to the character. And the sound design in this Mori is so crisp, I really like it. This is how a movie reference should be made, the Cenobites Mori is perfect. Not only it contains the weird head turns that he does in the Hellraiser film in the scene where this Mori is being referenced, but it also completely stretches the faces of the survivors which is something I never expected behavior to be able to do. And it contains an iconic line from the film while the survivors are moved to another dimension still alive, making it the second Mori where the survivors are not dead after the end of the animation. This Mori right here also makes me see just how big of a wasted opportunity Freddy Krueger's Mori is, as it should have been something similar to the Cenobite. I see a lot of parallels between the Onis Mori and the Hag, as both of them are very hardcore Moris, both of them also feature a part of the survivor being torn off and both of them have a very deep connection to the lore. And this is what makes me put the Oni above the Hag and most of the Moris in the game, because this one tells a story. So if you read the lore of the Oni, you are familiar with the fact that he cuts the tongue out of any peasant that dares to call him an Oni. And since every single survivor and player in DVD will refer to this character as an Oni, it makes perfect sense for him to just rip out the tongue so you cannot call him like that anymore. It feels kinda meta. It's just extremely savage and it also features the same particles at the end with the Kanabo as the Demogorgon does adding extra sauce to the animation itself. I think the Onryos Mori is one of the most underrated Moris because of how her condemned animation is way more common than the actual Mori. This is the only one that contains special sound effects that make the Mori have more impact. Another small detail that some people might have never noticed is how you can actually see the bones of the survivors snapped and finally I just love how this entire Mori was done without Sadako touching the survivors at all, showcasing how strong she actually is and how much the entity nerfs her. This is a fantastic animation. This Mori is a fantastic way to make a character that is made of a group of four unified in order to execute the survivor and at the same time show the personality of each of the members. The knight starts the Mori by commanding the assassin to lift the survivor from the ground, which makes way more sense than the survivors randomly deciding to stand up for no reason. Then, the jailer uses the branding Ivan to mark the survivors while he laughs, and the carnifex gives a brutal blow, and later the knight finishes it all with his gigantic sword. It's one of the most complicated Moris when described, because there is so much going on, and since it's the only one where there are actually more than one character, it makes it so much more iconic. I think everyone can agree that this is one of the best and most well received Moris in DVD. But when we talk about iconic Moris and the best overall, I think everyone can agree that the Ghostface is by far the best one. Taking a selfie with the survivors in order to keep it in Ghostface collection is such a fantastic and macabre choice for him and it fits his lore and his personality like a glove, showcasing how he's more of a joke style character than the rest in a very twisted way. This Mori also offers the photobombing opportunity for other survivors that might want to take part in the picture, which can cause memorable moments in your matches. But of all Moris in DVD, this is the only one where survivors will not feel mad that they have just been morried. What do you think about my ranks and do you agree with them? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.